them into different talking points. We want to work through those. Uh, what, what happens is these different leaders of these groups, if you want to be a leader, in a, a leader in a group, let us know. We'd like to get more people involved to start building out even outside of this big meeting and start pushing for uh, equity here in our ward. And what we, what we, what we essentially done was we analyzed the budget, just from the budget was at $14.5 billion. And we met with the chief financial officer and got some reports and realized that uh, it was the, what we were getting in Ward 8 was not even equal in compared to what other people were getting in other wards. And we feel like we had to change the name of the game and start taking our fight not only to the mayor, but to the other council members who represent our ward. Where I represent Ward 8 as a council member. We have four at large members on, on the city council. They get a vote on Ward 8, and also a uh, chairman that gets a vote on Ward 8. So we've been very, very aggressive. And people say we bullying and all that, but guess what? Bad things happen when good people do nothing. And it's a lot of people from all over the city that they, they paying uh, lobbyists every day. They come to my office, come to everybody's office to get what they need. And the reality is a lot of people from Ward 8 are not at the table. They say, when you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And we've been on the menu for far too long. Um, and so between um, Good Hope Road and Howard Road, we're going to have almost a billion dollars in development spent right here in the next three years. That's a lot of money spent with this in, this within this corridor. And so we want to make it, I've been adamant, I'm, I'm unapologetic about it. We want to make sure businesses and people in this community, and even in War 7, are able to participate in these economic opportunities. It makes no difference. It makes no, it makes no, it makes no difference if uh, these things come, right? It make no big deal if these things come and people in the community are getting poorer and poorer. And the crime keeps going up. And people are further pushed out. And so I want to make sure we have inclusion in all our conversations. Um, and, and I have these conversations early and often, not just in the community, but also down there in City Hall, because there are a lot of other people, people that have other issues that they press for in their community. And so we gotta make sure we are loud and we're organized. So if I wanted, so Wendy was across the room over there and I wanted to get her attention, and I was yelling like crazy, and she just couldn't hit me, right? Mm -hmm. But if we all yelled at the same time, yeah. Wendy, can we, on the count of three, can we yell, Wendy? Yeah. All right, one, two, three. Wendy! Wendy! How y'all doing? <laughs> she can hear us. Yeah. What happens is there are a few people in the ward advocating for housing, ownership, amenities, stores, business ownership, education, but we're not together. And it's fragmented, and the voice is just not as loud. Yeah. And sometimes it get clouded out because there are other people who are organized, who are getting paid to do this. There's people that come down and get paid to do lobbying every single day on the council, and their voices are simply just louder. And so we, uh, what we want to do today, today is that we took, took some of the ideas, not all the ideas, from the last uh, State of the Water Address, and we started to talk about some different policies. And so uh, what I want to, want to do today, are any leaders from any groups in here, my show of hands, any leaders from any of the, any of the groups in here today, my show of hands. That we had on the state of war. We had some groups. Anybody attended the state of war address? Okay. Uh, okay. So what we want to do is to make sure that if you if you are have a desire to be on one of these committees, because we're trying to get to work, y'all. We we're not trying to come here to just be meeting to be meeting. We're trying to get to work. And I remember the time when when we had a budget meeting that was going to get approved on Thursday, and I was fighting to get the. Uh, um, what was the center called? DCI, uh, DC Infrastructure Academy, up on um, Palmway Road, and $17 million took them out of the budget the day before. We brought Chairman Phil Menace into Ward 8. I don't know if he was at that meeting. People got upset about it. You know what happened the next day? Money the money went back in the budget. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a DC Infrastructure Academy right down here in Ward 8. We had about 16 people graduate from that program that now work in Pepco because we advocated for that and we just didn't stand by and didn't take it. We gotta be vigilant, we gotta know what's going on. And it's my job as a council member and it's your job if you live in the community, work in the community, worship in the community, as you know the information, get involved. Because what we, what don't affect you directly today may affect you indirectly or directly tomorrow. So it's not just their problem, it's all of our problem. Yeah. And so that was just an example of what's been happening from these particular conversations and meetings about getting you information. Um, and so I would digress for a moment, you ready? Mm -hmm. I don't know we have your filibuster. <laughs>